Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And my little Christmas pillow here, because to me this is the most wonderful time of the year. Many of us are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. I know a lot of other people celebrate a lot of other things. And it's just a, a holiday to them. And a time to give gifts. And Jesus' name is probably not mentioned but that's whose name I'm mentioning, and that's who we're studying about. We're in the book of Matthew. We read chapter 1 yesterday. If you're joining me, welcome. Just want to talk about the birth of Jesus and what happened in his life. We've already covered some of that in Matthew chapter 1. Uh, in the book of Luke, there's more background on the angel visiting Mary and... Uh, her visiting Elizabeth, her cousin, who would have John the Baptist, who would be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. So, but uh, Matthew just kind of gets to the genealogy uh, proof of things for the Jewish people in Matthew, what was going on. So we're in chapter 2. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. This next verse that I read is what the prophet said. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, with a capital G, that shall rule my people Israel. And um, they were expecting the Messiah to set up his earthly kingdom then. But when Jesus came the first time, he simply taught them about God and what God truly expected. And he called out wrong practices and hypocrisies. And uh, he, he let them know, as he taught, they were moving from the law, written, the letter of the law, to his law being written in your hearts, that he would come in and circumcise our hearts. He would take the hard things out. If we would let him come and live in our heart, um, he would do a changeover in us. We would know right from wrong, and we would desire to do right when he's come in our heart. We need that change because uh, we don't have proper desires when we're in the natural man. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God, and we need to be changed. And, you know, many things happen. His spirit comes in, but we're also taught to read the word. We've got to uh, change our mind in a lot of ways. We've had a lot of training by the world. And as you read and study the word of God, you're, you're coming out of being conformed to the world and you're learning how to live godly in Christ Jesus. So it's important. Read that word every day and learn. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. That's not what Herod is wanting to do. Herod's wanting them to let him know where the child is so he can kill the child. Verse 9, when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, 
So we're not coming into the stable where Jesus was born. This has taken them a little bit to follow that star and find them. So they're in a house now. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being, <coughs> excuse me, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were, <coughs> excuse me, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So, supernatural visitations to protect this child, and uh, it's also fulfilling prophecy. 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. So he's killing the children two and under, trying to make sure that he gets Jesus. So all of them killed to make sure of that. So wickedness has gone on and on and on through history. And many times it's Satan, isn't it? He's trying to stamp out the Messiah. He later tries to stamp out the Jewish people altogether many times. And we are in days where anti-Semitism is once again on the rise. <coughs> and the Christian <coughs> excuse me. And the Christian people of God. <coughs> the Christian people of God is we're going to have more persecution. More and more in these end times that we are in. Then Herod. Okay, we'd already read that. Verse 17. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, and you know in the King James Version, I don't think we see a Jeremy the prophet back there, do we? So there were some prophets that, didn't make it into the Bible, except in this case, he's referenced in the New Testament. In Ramah was there, here is what Jeremy the prophet had said, in Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise. And take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead, which sought the young child's life. So another angel visitation. <clears throat> 